Good. <clears throat> Whoa. Start all over. Good morning. This is Tom Styles, and this is Tom's Radio Room Show. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm still recovering from my adventure yesterday putting up my new HD TV antenna. And one thing that I noticed when I was testing that antenna against my disc on my newer disc on antenna. It's a little antenna. Um, they used to sell for $12.95 about a century ago from Radio Shack and now they're up to $29.95 if you can find a Radio Shack store that's still open. And I've, I've gotten very good use out of my original one and I bought a new one about six months ago from Amazon. Exactly the same antenna and it's doing a great job too. Uh, as shown in the test I did on the new HDTV antenna, the disc cone did pretty good. Now, the characteristic of the disc cone antenna, at least the type I've got, is that it's pretty good on a wide band of frequencies, from about 25 megahertz to about a gigahertz. It does a pretty good job and I can actually test it on the lower part of that band. This um, MFJ223 antenna analyzer, this particular one, will go up to 60 megahertz. So I can test it say from that antenna from 25 or 30 megahertz to 60 and show you what I'm talking about. So that's what I'm going to try to do today. I'm going to zoom in and I don't know if this old video cam camcorder is going to do a very good job but we're going to give it a try. The biggest thing is trying to keep it in the frame. So, oh, here we go. So, move the box out of the way. So here is, uh, and it won't reach, so I'm going to have to reframe the camera. Here is the cable from that newer Discon antenna. I'm going to hook it up to the analyzer, and I'm going to move the camera to get the analyzer back in the frame. And uh, it's, a, it's another thing, whoops, you're not in the frame, so you're not seeing me doing anything at all so let me get up and move the camera yep there it is over there it's this way yeah right there it's going to be a struggle um but the one thing um uh, this is definitely a handheld let me flip my viewfinder over so i can see whoops yeah i'm not in the camera I mean, I'm not in the, I'm not, yeah, I gotta move it around, it's busy, let me come down some. Oh boy, I do definitely need a cameraman. Okay, that's strange, it shows it in the view here, but when I flip it over and I look at it, I'm sitting down, it's, yeah, it's in the view. Okay, good enough, <laughs> good enough. That's all you're going to get from me, uh, it's, uh, yes. So anyway, <clears throat> as I was saying, this um, analyzer is strictly, where to go again, uh, handheld. So uh, it won't easily stand up, especially when you've got the weight of an antenna on it. So you got to hold it in your hand. And I'm going to turn it on. And I doubt that's even showing up in my camera but we're going to try it and what i can do is i can do a scan and then i can disconnect it from the antenna and bring the, the meter closer to the camera so you can see the results so i've got that antenna the disc cone antenna hooked up and i'm going to go to scan and i want to scan uh a, a upper limits of this device since it only goes up to it's got some dirt on there. No, it goes up to 60 megahertz. So 
If I do, it's set for 24 megahertz scan, which you take half of that and you get 24. So I got, I can go up 24 megahertz from a center frequency. And if I want to go up to 60, we can actually go, we can change that span. Let's change it to 48, 48 megahertz, which half of that is 24. And if I take 60, which I can't do in my head, so I'll get my pad and paper here. If I take 60 megahertz, which is the top end of this meter, and I subtract 24, I get 36. Is that right? 36 and 24. Yeah, I get 36 megahertz. So that's where I want to put the center frequency of this meter, which I have no idea what it's showing up on the camera. So I'm going to set, I'm going to move the center frequency with this knob, and I've got to change, um, I've got to change what number I'm, digit I'm changing, so I can change it rapidly. Okay, there we go. Now we're going to go up to 36 megahertz, and that should take me up to 60 megahertz and down to. Um, uh, I don't know, 36 minus 24 is 12 megahertz. So the disc cone is only advertised to be good down to about 25 megahertz. So we're going to punch in scan and see what happens. Okay, it's scanning right now. And we're done. So now I'm going to disconnect the antenna. I'm going to disconnect the antenna and then I'm going to use the box to prop this up again so that I can adjust the whoops just the camera okay stand by and what I would do for somebody that would take care of the camera work yeah wrong button hey there we go okay move it over yeah it looks pretty good it's relatively oops wrong way okay so there we are that's the result now, what I had said is that the disc cone antenna design is supposed to give you, you know, fair results on all frequencies. And if there's no, there's no, supposedly there's no frequency that is better than another frequency. And look what you see here. And I'll use the pen here. Um, something even finer. Here we go. Is that you can see there's a nice pattern here and it's relatively uniform. This is, excuse me, this is the SWR. And it's really relatively uniform. Now this starts at, what I say, 12 megahertz, goes up to 36 at the middle and goes all the way up to 60 megahertz. So you can actually see that as you get into the frequency range that the disc cone antenna is designed for, which is above 30 megahertz, that's the very low end, it starts improving, the SWR starts getting better. So you can go see it going down. And it's, as I said before, it's pretty consistent. And the number I'm seeing uh, right here at 36 megahertz is 4.58 SWR, which is not great, but it's okay, and we're only going to use this for receiving. And if I go on up to the higher frequencies, as high as this thing will go, 60 megahertz, at 58.88 megahertz, the SWR is down to 3.36. Not great, especially if you're trying to transmit, but for receiving, that's pretty good. So my point is, the analyzer is showing me what I expected and what I've read about these little disc cone antennas. Now this one is the little um, one that was originally sold by Radio Shack 30 years ago, and still they still sell it if you can find a Radio Shack that's open. 
for about $29. And you can get them on Amazon for about $19. And they're very simple. They, they have very few components. Very, pretty darn small. I've shown you uh, videos of mine. Matter of fact, in the, the video of the HDTV that I just did, antenna that I just did, I tried to show you that little disc on antenna. Not much to it. It's pretty easy to install because it's light. And it does, you know, for overall above, say, 30 megahertz, you know, for your scanners, yeah, it's a pretty good antenna. And this kind of shows you why. It's very consistent throughout the whole band. Not great, but pretty good. So I like, I really like this antenna analyzer. They also make one that's for the very high frequency and the ultra high frequency. Um, I don't think they make one that's HF, VHF, and UHF. I think you have to have two separate ones in this format. Now, MFJ um, does have their older style antenna analyzers, and they have one that goes HF, VHF, UHF, and I think it sells for about $300. This is, I think, $280. But if you wanted to test above 60 megahertz, you're going to have to get a different one. So anyway, that's the show for today. If you enjoyed the show, please give me a thumbs up. That tells me I'm doing shows that are of interest to my viewers. Also, you can, there's a button down below the video for share. You click on that button. And it gives you a whole bunch of websites that you can share my videos on. Therefore, more people learn about my videos. And it makes everybody happy, right? We want to be happy. So anyway, thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Oh, I keep forgetting you have to go to the main menu before it will turn off. And there it's up. Okay. That's a wrap.